dear colleagues, consistent with our mission of building a sustainable home, we at the Koning remain committed to offer products that minimize the environmental impact throughout their life cycle. Our products are designed to increase people's comfort by making them top-notch on energy saving, noise reduction, and of course, aesthetics. We're also committed to produce our products in the most sustainable manner possible. More specifically, when it comes down to carbon footprint, we'll go beyond the call of duty, doing more than what's expected. We commit to reducing our own CO2 emission by 60% by the year 2030. Taking into account the expected growth of our business, this means a reduction of up to 75% CO2 for each ton produced. And we don't plan to stop there. We strive for net zero by 2050. This will require a different way of working in all of our facilities around the world. We also will do further investments in our recycling plants. We have the ambition to close the loop. The first step when setting a target is knowing one's current status. That's why we started calculating our carbon footprint last year. Now, before giving you the results of the footprint, let me briefly explain the methodology in accordance with the greenhouse gas uh, protocol. A carbon footprint consists of three scopes. Scope one uh, are emissions related to own operations. In our case, it's mostly related to natural gas and fuel oil consumption. Scope two emissions are related to the amount and the type of electricity consumption. And scope three emissions are related to one's uh, supply chain impact, both upstream and downstream. Now, let's have a look at our carbon footprint of 2021. The Koenig Group emits to a total carbon equivalent of 624,000 ton CO2 emissions. Now, this might sound a lot uh, on itself. It's, of course, an abstract number. So just to make it a bit more concrete for you, uh, you can compare it with uh, the same as 350,000 return flights, Brussels, New York, or the annual uh, carbon footprint of 80,000 Europeans. Now, when you have a look at the graph, you immediately see that our main impact is in our scope three emissions. Of these 88% scope three emissions, 80% is linked to the raw materials uh, we source. And it won't come as a surprise that 70% is linked to PVC resin. In second instance, energy consumption in all uh, three uh, scopes uh, impacts our carbon footprint for 14% and electricity due to the nature of our production process takes the highest uh, share of that 9%. And logistics accounts for 5% of our corporate carbon footprint. Now, all other categories, I'm talking about company cars, commuting, waste and business travel, all together account only for 1% of our carbon footprint. We didn't only calculate our 2021 emissions, we also compared them to, with our 2020 and 2019 emissions. And as you can see on the graph, our footprint increases. In fact, it increases at the same level as we source raw materials and we use electricity in our production. Leaving us to the conclusion that if we don't act now, our carbon footprint will keep on increasing at a similar uh, phase over the next years in a simulation leading to 55% more carbon emissions by 2030. 
So the time to act is now. For setting our targets, we chose the most ambitious global standards for uh, setting carbon reduction targets. It's called the Science-Based Targets, which is an initiative of several global organizations, amongst which the United Nations, and it's in fact an outcome of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change of uh, 2015. The long-term ambition of the science-based targets, and thus also of our uh, corporate targets, is climate neutrality by 2050. The methodology, methodology of the science-based targets uh, allows to set separate targets for the scope one and two emissions on which a company has a direct impact and scope three emission on emissions on which a company has an indirect impact. So let's have a look at our scope one and two targets. We aim for a reduction of 60% scope one and scope two carbon emissions by 2030. You should know that that is more ambitious than the minimum level required for the science-based targets and that uh, additional emissions due to company growth should be minimized within the um, uh, emissions we uh, aspire to have in 2030. When calculating our target versus the production volumes, our ambition level is even higher. We aim for 75% less emissions by 2030. So how do we want to achieve these targets? The answer is twofold. First of all, we will use green electricity. We'll maximize the available capacity for on-site renewable electricity production. We'll bridge the gap by sourcing green electricity. At first instance, by sourcing uh, renewable energy certificates and gradually, gradually shifting towards purchase power agreements. Secondly, it's important uh, to keep in mind that the greenest energy is the energy we don't consume. Energy efficiency therefore plays an important part of our action plan. More than half of the energy we consume is linked to our extrusion processes. We will focus on process improvements and other actions such as phasing out the use of fuel oil, increased uh, measuring and monitoring, avoiding leakages of uh, compressed air, relighting, insulation, replacements of machinery, etc. Other contributors uh, to this, uh, to this uh, part of our action plan are shifting to um, electrification of our car policy and using lower carbon refrigerants. So let's uh, move on to our scope three targets. We have selected a distinctive science-based target, a so-called physical um, intensity target for our scope three emissions, meaning that we aim for 48% less carbon emissions versus, versus production volumes by 2030 compared to our baseline year 2021 again. Now our action plan to reach uh, our scope, true, scope 3 ambition is even um, more ambitious than our scope 1 and 2 ambitions because of the very mere fact that we are depending on our suppliers. We're currently in dialogue with our key suppliers uh, to uh, source lower carbon intensive PVC, re PVC resin. We are starting with PVC resin because of the high share in our carbon footprint, but do not, will not only stick uh, to PVC resin and look at uh, lower carbon uh, supply of other materials and uh, packaging. Logistics accounting for 5% of our carbon footprint, also plays a part in our scope three action plan. And we take responsibility ourselves as well by increasing the share of our recycling activities 
and the share of uh, recycled content used in our products, we minimize the use for sourcing uh, virgin raw materials. To achieve net zero, we'll need to work on different fronts to change key aspects of how we are doing business. Firstly, innovation is needed for the low or zero carbon energy we use. Think about innovations in green hydrogen, in industrial heat pumps, in batteries, etc. Secondly, while we're confident that the choices that we make today will be profitable over time, they will require substantial investments in short and medium term. And thirdly, carbon impact should be incorporated in management and operational decisions we take on a daily basis. Sustainability and decarbonization is not a mere responsibility of one department or, or, or one person alone. Every one of us can have an impact on the emissions we emit as a company. And sustainability is not only about technology or investments, it's also very much a behavioral change. It's about the right mindset to take decisions on a daily basis. And last but not least, the Koenig cannot do it alone. We need to work together with our stakeholders, our partners, to embark on this uh, decarbonisation journey. Therefore, external com communication and cooperation is key to our success. So what are the immediate next steps? We have submitted our targets for validation to the Science-Based Targets Initiative. We expect formal validation in the first quarter, quarter of next year. In the meanwhile, we stay focused on our science-based targets commitments. But an environmental policy is not only carbon related. Other environmental topics such as water management and waste management are just as important. That's why you can expect uh, ambitions and targets on these topics over the coming months uh, as well. To conclude, I'd like to emphasize that this is just the beginning. We will work all together to reach net zero. More info will follow soon, but in the meanwhile, feel free to reach out with any questions or suggestions you might have.